Hello, uh, my name is Stephen Van Heerden. Um, welcome to this session on bringing value to digital dentistry with data. Um, during this session, we will try and show you the importance of data and how this is actually going to affect uh, our whole digital dentistry workflow. So I'd like to thank Zhao uh, in, for the previous session because it was a good introduction into what we're going to discuss now. Um, Zhao was going through you know, what the current digital dentistry workflow. Um, and I think if we think about what we, how we define and how we think about digital dentistry today, um, we look at the patient session, right? And we look at the, the treatment of the patient and that's where we define what digital dentistry is. Um, I think what I'm gonna try and do is take this one step further and I believe that digital dentistry should also include how we plan for these treatments, um, you know, how we use data within these treatments to actually become more efficient. Um, so I think one thing is for sure, we all have EHRs in our dental clinics um, and we, we collect a lot of data there, but how do we use that data? You know, do we only use that data to, to book treatments? Um, you know, do we effectively use our data to make us more efficient and to learn and to improve what we do in the clinic? So there, there are other aspects of, and ways to collect data within our clinic to complete this digital dentistry loop. And I think those are, you know, the dental unit, which is our, maybe our prized possession in, in, in the dental clinic, um, you know, or the working course in the dental clinic. So. Um, you know, how do we get data from our dental unit? Are we using the data? If we have a dental unit that can collect data, are we actually using that data correctly to analyze and see how efficient we are within the clinic? And the last part is, you know, looking at our consumables and how we use the data collected from our consumables um, to actually improve efficiency in the clinic. And I think, you know, the way I see digital dentistry is um, not only the treatment, but actually seeing the full visibility in the treatment session, right? So that includes the underlying um, works. So the things we don't see and what the patient doesn't see, I think that is still part of digital dentistry is that full treatment session. So talking about that is, you know, there are things that we don't really look at today as being part of that let's say, digital dentistry loop um, or their treatment session. And that's our materials and, and instruments are consumables. Um, I think we, we somehow tend to just see that as a consumable and we don't try and get data out of that and we don't try and use that data to improve what we're doing in the clinic. Where I think it, it is really important that we understand also how we use instruments how we use our materials, are we using them correctly? Are we actually uh, reprocessing our instruments correctly? So I think these are all really important questions we need to ask ourselves and look at in order to you know, actually improve how our clinic is being operated. And then I think one of the big questions and I think on everyone's mind is, you know, why? Why, why, why does having data help? And why do I need to use this data to actually help me improve what we're doing in the clinic? Uh, you know, a lot of people think that they might be efficient as they are, um, but I think if you don't have data, you don't know if you can become more efficient, right? Uh, I think coming out of the situation we are right now, um, you know, and when we start seeing patients now again, we want that customer satisfaction. We want our customers to know and feel that when they come into our clinic, they're getting the best treatment that they can get. And also that all our infection control um, processes are efficient and uh, that nothing will happen once they come into the clinic. So I think uh, you know, these are really important things. And how do we show this and how do we communicate this if we're not collecting data to be able to prove this. So I think data is important, 
But I think more importantly is how we use that data to start analyzing and improving what we're doing in the clinic. On this first uh, slide, you know, we're just looking at different data points that we're collecting through the path of materials and instruments um, and trying to see how, where we have deficiencies in the clinic, right? Um, you know, are we, are we efficient? So let's say, are we reprocessing the same amount of instruments that we're actually using in clinical use? Or do we have enough instruments and materials that we require for every treatment? So, you know, I think being able to get data, collect data and use it in the correct way to improve what we're doing is really important because it actually shows us the points that we need to improve. So if I go further and actually start looking into more data we're getting from, and this is an example of our dental unit, you know, what, what our dental unit can provide us. Um, and this is really interesting data. And I'll touch on some of these points a little bit in more detail just to give you an idea. So on these are two dental units, two different treatments, two different doctors. And this is a use of one day, you know, from 1 p.m. to 9 p.m as an example. So we can see that the dental unit has been switched on from 1 p.m. and the latest one was switched off at 9 p.m. And the second line, we can actually see the bookings we have. So the information we're getting from electronic health record or our booking information. Um, and we can see that these two doctors have got totally different approaches, right? And one doctor is actually fully booked the whole day, booked treatments according to what they presume the time will take for that specific treatment that they booked, right? And the other doctor has been more conservative where they have a set time for every, every treatment. So there's no difference in time. doesn't matter what the treatment is. Um, but they also give themselves a break during the day so they can actually have lunch, um, have a break, break et cetera. Um, which might be a smart thing if you think if we have overlapping on time, if we time, you know, the treatment lasts longer than we planned, then we also can catch up at certain time of the day. The interesting thing is looking at, for example, instrument usage. And this instrument usage is actually uh, tethered instruments on, on, on the console. So, you know, how do we use these instruments? How often do we do use suction? So this data starts giving us a lot of detail into how our dentists in the clinic are actually using the instruments they have available to them on the dental unit. Um, and I think the next part of this is actually the, the infection control part, which I think going forward is even more important um, than it is right now. And here we can see, you know, short flushes and long flushes that have been done on the dental unit. And I think this is really important um, moving forward, as I said, you know, we want to ensure that after every treatment we have flushed our dental unit, and this is just from a quality assurance perspective. So now we can actually look at this data and see, you know, have we flushed uh, after every patient? Uh, and then have we flushed in the morning and the evening after we've done with the dental unit? So it gives us a lot of data to start seeing how our dentists are doing without us. And it's not trying to be a big brother. It's just trying to use data to become more efficient within the clinic. So I'll take this a little bit deeper um, and we'll look at maybe how we can start also using this data in a, in, a, in a better way to look at how our treatments are planned, how our treatments are done, all right? So here we took a little bit of data from the dental units again and also from our treatment and planning session, IEHR and looked at two different um, procedures. So a one surface full and a two surface full and looked at how efficient we are in the clinic um, based on the booking time we allowed, a lot of booking time, if you would say, and also uh, against the actual chair time of the dentist. So when the patient has been in the chair. So if we look at 
like this uh, first pink dot on the one surface full, we can see that this dentist is actually allotted a certain amount of time, but then he's used that time 100%, right? So he's used the full time of that dental unit of the treatment that he planned for that surface full. Um, if we go back and look at the data that we had on the previous slide, we would see that maybe, you know, even though he's had that full time, he might have not been using the dental unit the full time. But because we're actually only looking at one data point, we can see that he's used the full time. Um, but then we see that, you know, the, the two green dots, uh, those dentists are taking a little bit more time on their surface fault. So we could think that the pink uh, dentist is actually, you know, the MVP, the superstar, because he's actually being the most efficient out of the different uh, dentists. However, if we look at this a little bit in more detail, we can start seeing based on the tethered instruments, we can actually get a better indication on how that time is actually being used and what he's actually using. So for example, if, if we look at the turbine and the curing lines, uh, you know, that MVP that we saw, he's actually using his turbine three times less than the other dentists. And also his curing light, he's using maybe even less than three times. So, uh, you know, how do we look at this data and how do we start thinking, you know, is that MVP still a great dentist? Not that he is not a great dentist, but how is he, you know, why is he so efficient? Why does he do things so quickly compared to the other dentists? So this is very important to, you know, analyze and use this data to our advantage to become more efficient to change processes within our dentistry. The other part of this is, and I think this is going to become um, more important moving forward, um, is you know being able to link the data of our hand instruments and materials and consumables to the patient. So whatever we're using on a patient, are we getting the right data on that patient record to you know, go back and see for quality assurance that we've actually treated the patient correctly, that the instruments have been treated correctly within reprocessing. So I think it's really important to understand that you know, the data on materials and also instruments that we use, hand instruments, is also important to link to a patient session. So then going behind the scenes and looking at things that we don't necessarily take uh, or use and um, we sort of take for granted, I think, in a way where we come to purchasing and, and things like that. So, you know, I think a lot of times we tend to purchase based on habit rather than on fact because we don't have data. And this, this is just showing us that, you know, we can actually start looking at what our inventory is and on average sort of how often we use instruments and if we see that we are using instruments more than we actually have stopped we can actually start purchasing based on that i think it's really important uh, especially being that we've been closed for such a long time you know how do we regain that revenue how do we you know get up to where we were um i think it's be just tightening the belt a little bit, but becoming more efficient in what we do, you know, whether it's our purchasing in this case, you know, purchase based on what we need, not on what we think we need. Uh, so it gives us more insight into that. Then I think one of the things we we sure of, and, and we waste a lot of materials within our treatments, or let's say at the end of the year, not in our treatments only, but uh, we let a lot of stuff expire. And it ends up in the bin. So how do we start being better at actually um, using materials before they expire and forecasting for what, how we need to purchase uh, materials? So by having data, this, this opens up a whole different world where finally as a dentist, we can actually start forecasting what we need to purchase and when we need to purchase due to expiration of different materials. 
And then, you know, if we're an individual practice, we can see what we have in different arbitraries. Uh, you know, we can start setting up different uh, alarm limits on our materials, uh, what we need in a different clinic or a different operatory. So it's really interesting when we start using this data, we can really become more efficient on, you know, on a, exactly every single dental operatory, uh, you know, on what's in there, on what we use on a daily basis, what we need in that operatory. So, you know, when we talk about um, just in time delivery, right? Uh, you know, here we can actually ensure that we actually have things in the opportunity when we need them and they're not just sitting there unused for months and months at a time. So then we start actually, you know, with this data, we start getting the ability to start actually setting alarm limits and set expirations, um, sterile expirations, etc. So I think it's really important when we start looking at this data, you know, how does it bring value? I think we, we are really trying to drive, um, you know, efficiency and how we can improve whether it's on our reprocessing or whether, you know, we, we want to benchmark um, different procedures to improve those procedures. So how do we do this without having data? And I think that's really an important thing when we're trying to drive efficiencies. We need that data to be able to drive the efficiency. And at the same time, you know, by having this data, it's also giving us an input on how to increase revenue. Wastage is one, you know, um, chair time, another one. How do we increase that revenue? Because maybe we can get more people in the dental unit if we are more efficient on our booking times. So there's lots of different things that we can actually start doing when we actually use the data to our advantage. So, I think it's really interesting when you start looking at, you know, how people are using this data and the value it is bringing to their organizations, uh, their dental clinics. So uh, I think at current, we don't even think about this and we haven't thought about it. We haven't thought about that, you know, the, the information we get from our EHR, we, the information we get from our dental unit, the information we get from our consumables, that that it could even be part of digital dentistry. I think, uh, you know, that 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 is the missing, really the missing link um, to what we see as digital dentistry. And I think, you know, this is a good um, analogy is, you know, if we go to a dentist of 1903, a dental unit, obviously, most of us wouldn't go there today, right? We'd rather want to go to a dental clinic where they got top of the art technology, um, you know, they have everything available and use that dentist. So why are we then looking at this technology and we have this technology, but we're not taking advantage of it? So I think the, the, the big take home message here is we have a lot of data. Um, there are ways we can collect more data and using this data to actually become more efficient and change things within the clinic is really important. And especially thinking about how um, we are coming, what we're coming back to now after this period of time, um, you know, and the infection control part, the quality assurance part, that even becomes more prevalent that we need data to actually bring more value to our customers. So I'd like to thank you uh, from here and wish you all a good conference further and a uh, better day. Thank you very much.